What up, YouTube? Welcome back. Season number three. This is episode 17. Hold on, let me double check. Yep, that's right. Episode 17. As you can see, my man Don Newman here. 13 and 1 record. After going 4 and 8, then 9 and 4. He goes 13 and 1. Wins the conference. Wins the conference championship. And along the way, you know, just a, a dominant, dominant, dominant performance. I'm just taking notes here. Forgive me. As I know in the background, what we were able to do. He finished the season. Finished the season as the uh, the number. What were we? Number eight, number eight ranked team. So, you know, finished the season in the top top ten. Just a phenomenal phenomenal year, man. What can I say? Phenomenal year, phenomenal coaching career, young coaching career so far. His prestige is now up to A plus. And the question for this offseason is, will he stay or will he go? Career record is now up to 26 and three. If you ask me, it's still kind of, it's still kind of early. You know what I'm saying? It's still kind of early uh, to to leave. You know. Although, we're going to look at the carousel and see what's up. Oh, wow. Looks like uh, the Troy head coach takes over for Alabama head coach. I wonder what happened to Alabama head coach. Oh, Saban retired at age 71. Now in real life, that didn't happen. But he won a, he won a championship and rolled out. Pittsburgh offered your boy. And I'm going to have to decline that offer. TCU looking for a head coach. Looks like they have offered, they have hired Clemson's offensive coordinator at TCU. Oregon up next in their head coaching search. Oregon hires their defensive coordinator. Oh, Miss up next. Looking like Oh, Miss trying to look at me or somebody. Yeah, they are. I'm gonna decline that. I'm not really feeling like Oh, Miss like that. I'm not gonna lie. Damn, he, they went two and ten. Yeah, no, we're not. We're not. We're not trying to get with Oh, Miss. Virginia, Virginia, who also went two and ten. They hire Memphis's head coach. He's coming off a good season. Baylor, after one and eleven, comes to your boy, and I turn that one down and say no. Let me see. I just skip. No, well, 
that's about it for now. I mean, I, I don't know. Let, let's see. You definitely don't want Troy. Looks like these schools at this point get lower tiered and lower tiered. We don't want them. Right? Yeah. I'm not. I definitely don't want no lower tier team. So it looks like Don Newman will stay put for this next season. Not that I'm itching to go. You know, itching to go anywhere. Uh, that'll just be what it is. Looks like we lost our uh, told you told you if we go to the if if we go to the playoffs I said if we go to the playoffs we're gonna lose our offensive coordinator and it looks like that is exactly what has transpired so Bryce gets a new offensive coordinator Dave Clawson I'll look him up to see if he's a real person Tui uh, Tui Asasopo Marcus Tui Asasopo left for a better job let's see what job that is I'm pretty sure he left to be ahead now if he left to be somebody's offensive coordinator I mean you know he could do what he want to do but I'm going to be a bit hurt And don't get me wrong, he wasn't perfect, you know what I'm saying, man? He, he definitely, there you go, right there. Oh, he left to go become the Navy head coach. Okay. Marquis Tuiasa Sopo. He left for Navy, so we'll have to, I'm gonna have to take note of that and put Navy on the schedule. You know, we, we just finished a, a home and away series with army so we'll put one on there for navy so we could play uh you know play our uh disciple here and so they say the new guy that we have is somebody named dave Clawson. so let me just look that up real quick hold on Yep, he's a real guy, but it looks like he's more of a uh, a defensive guy in real life. But on here, he'll be our new offensive coordinator, and we'll get him acclimated. He's only a a deep. He's a wait. No, no. Yeah, he he's just a D plus head coach. Tui Asasopo is like a C plus maybe. On the defensive side, ooh, we lost our defensive coordinator too. The new one is Tony Nelson. The old one, was his name Jake? Jay Lee, hold on, L-E-O, J-L-E-L-O-E. -E. And then we lost both of them. Where did he go? There he is right there. He left for a head coaching job. Oh, okay. He goes to WKU, the team we beat in the conference championship. So he becomes a conference foe. Ah. That's what ended up happening. So we lost both our offense and defensive coordinator. Let me go run through that now because I don't want to forget and not do it <clears throat> or can we do that now no. hold on let's see damn the new guy only has one holy cow 
Oh no, yeah, 26. Okay, okay, no. Three. Sorry. Legit, they were crossing legit then. But this dude only has one. Damn, Tony Nelson. Hold on, let me see if Tony Nelson is legit, is real. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, no, not really. I don't see no Tony Nelsons. So I don't think this is a. I don't think this is a real person. But. That's what we're gonna have. Oh, snap. I didn't mean to do that. My bad, y'all. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. This is good. All that for nothing. Casualties of war. We we lose. We end up losing our uh, our coaches. We end up losing our coaches. So I'm gonna take a huge break right here because I want to try Fang's transfer portal, and I think this is where it comes into play. Uh, we also gonna try some other stuff. So we got a lot of shit to do, um, a lot of stuff to do here on the background. So hold on. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Okay, man. So let's take a look at the uh, players leaving. All right. This here is the screen for the NCAA tool that we use. As you can see, uh, we got Kalen Griffin Stan coming back for a senior year instead of going to the pro draft. Bunch of guys trans uh, graduating. Cameron Slade, we talked out of, we're gonna redshirt him for his freshman year, but we talked him out of transfer him, transferring to his day. Johnny James, we're gonna let walk. And one second. So here it is on the screen, the results. Two guys that are staying, the guy that is transferring. Although, let's see. Should we try to keep him? Uh, he'll play in maybe nine more games. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's moving on. All right, so that'll be that. These are the guys that are graduating. Make sure that Ah, oh, there we go, okay. Yes. this Newman one that'll be the first saved class under head coach Don Newman it looks like the Braylon Carroll is the only yep, Make sure it's saved. yep there we go Newman one I guess as you can see I got a bunch of other drive classes so I want to make sure I save Don Newman classes under something I can find them under easily so Newman one will be this first class ok 
Okay, hold on one second now. Let me work with this overhaul. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Okay, we're back. So, I was going to try Fang's transfer tool, but I looked at the instructions and it sort of scares the crap out of me. So, uh, we're going to skip that and just stick with the systems tool for now. Look at the draft results. The Braylon Carroll was drafted. Like I said, we dra we saved our draft class. In this case, unfortunately, we didn't save last year's, but it is what it is. We'll we'll get over it. We will survive. So that is the draft class transfer request. There were none. We can advance at this point to the recruiting. Alright guys, so let's take a look at the recruiting. There's still some players on the board that we're trying to sign. Some good players as you can see. Alright, I won't show what we signed just yet. I'll try to go through this and see what we can add on. I think I might go with this. And we'll just see what happens here.
Oh, we got that guy. One, two, three, four, five. So what? We signed one, two, three, four, five. Damn, we, how did we lose the cornerback to UTSA? Mm, mm, mm. So we just signed five guy, five more to our class. And that's a total of 16. So on signing day, first let me go here and just clean up. He ends up signing with nobody, nobody, nobody. He signed with us. I can't believe we lost him to UTSA. That's unbelievable. We we left <clears throat> we left a lot on the field when it came to the recruiting this this off season. We signed a decent class, but you know, uh, not as good as we could have done. We didn't sign any safeties, although we lost a couple safeties. We still ended up with a 35 class. They must have added on to us because. We only signed 16 that I know of, and it looks like they show showing a total of 22, so they added some recruits to our class. So let's go through and see what we signed. We'll run through it here on the search. They're showing 23. Let me see. Okay, this dude. Wait, both these guys. Huh? I don't know what the deal is with both those guys, but. Let's run through and show the class, the class reveal. We got Brandon Greer, a defensive end out of Mission Bend, Texas. He's a good looking defensive end, four stars. He was a plus five after we recruited him, so he's an 80 overall. Defensive end coming in. Number 153 overall. Recruiting prospect. Pretty strong looking recruit. You can see we signed him over. His skills coming in not the fastest but he's a defensive end so he don't really need to be like that he's super strong though as you can see for a freshman coming in got power moves got tackles so he's gonna solidify that defensive line that's Brandon Greer out of Mission Bend Texas 6'3 250 next behind him we got Chris Hill. Actually, as a matter of fact, let me save this while we're here. We got Chris Hill. Another defensive end, four star. He's a plus eight, so 83 coming in as a freshman. So one freshman defensive end at 80, another freshman defensive end at 83. Yep, tell me about it. Number 158 overall recruit. He's faster. And actually stronger so scary yeah 81 speed 83 strength 84 this dude right here is a monster Chris Hill is a monster he is a monster 
Okay, next, this is the guy we we really wanted to sign him. This 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 guy makes the whole class right here. Akeem McWilson. We're gonna have to try to find ways to get him touches. True freshman. He's an athlete, but you already know we're putting him at running back. Four three forty, three hundred bench, three thirty squat. He's showing all this this way because he's an athlete. But again, we're gonna put him at running back. He is a beast. We're really happy to sign him. Another four star plus eleven. He's an 82 guy. 297 overall recruit. The number 11 athlete. Then next, Noah Beaver, offensive tackle. Number 47 tackle. 508. Number 508 recruit overall from New Mexico. Kirtland, New Mexico, to be exact. He's pretty strong. 69. We can rest at him. He's a good looking recruit for the for the future. Decent blocking coming in as a freshman. Hopefully he can make the team. I'm pretty sure he'll make the team and we can keep and, and develop him. Then next, BJ Jones, another recruit that we most likely will develop and another guy running a 4-3. BJ runs a 4-3-6 from Redondo Beach, California. Number 654 overall, 106 receiver. Coming in with decent receiving number, receiving ability, but that speed, that speed, that speed. Again, he'll most likely red shirt. We got another defensive end. We might look to move him to another position. This is Jaden Lace, Lacey Ajuko Jr. Defensive end from Santa Ana, California. Not the fastest, not the strongest. We'll see if we can find a place for him or he may not make the team. We'll see. Then we got a guard, Brendan Ward, a sophomore Juco guy from Decatur, Illinois. 6'6", 277. Pretty strong. He's a 69 overall. We most likely will redshirt him if he can make the team and we'll develop him down the line. Now, it looks like we do have a free safety. This must be one of the six, because you can see his lock is 51. I don't remember signing, I don't remember even offering this guy. But Isaiah Johnson ends up on our board from Thornton, Colorado. Super slow, free safety. We'll see, we might end up moving him to another position if he makes the team a receiver grant bohanna 61213 out of chattanooga tennessee pretty decent speed yeah as you can see he's not recruited so we didn't same with this guy so these two, these are two of the guys, remember I said, I only know of 16 recruits that we signed. These are two that we did not, I, you know, they just magically ended up on my board. Next guy, literally Jack guy, 5'11", 297, undersized height, height wise, undersized offensive guard, but a good looking guard prospect. Super strong out of Houghton City, Texas. He's a plus six, 73 guy. We most likely will red shirt and develop him, but super excited about his future. Let me scroll this up. After him, we got another guard. 
this is the third guy of the guys that we didn't bring on and I, I could tell because he's not scouted see we scout the guys that we offered and brought on we scouted so they just gave us three freebies so it's another guard Whitney Mujaha Muja Mujahid decent strength we'll see if he makes a team After him, we got a middle linebacker, Mackenzie Balderi from Kalispel, Calis Montana. Super strong middle linebacking prospect. We may redshirt him just to have uh, this create distance between him and the other middle linebacker that we just redshirted this year. Who's coming back as a redshirt freshman middle linebacker, but another good prospect for that defense and he's much faster than the other guy so we'll see then we have another cornerback Claude Mullins from Sarasota Springs New York decent speed 44240 he's a 66 guy so he'll most likely red shirt 90 speed 92 acceleration he got the speed that we like his coverage is so 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 we'll definitely need to develop him but athletically he has the makeup after him michael fuller a sophomore juco transfer from richmond texas 61203 he's a plus 269 guy we most likely will redshirt him outside linebacker coming in good looking linebacker can tackle can hit and he can cover it's decent coverage guy so we'll red shirt him if you remember what ryan bush he he, he don't look as good as ryan bush coming in but ryan bush was a 69 or 68 that we redshirted. He'll be a 69. We'll redshirt him and see what he can do. Next up, Darius McGirt, McGirt Jr. He's a plus 6, 72 overall. Offensive tackle from Hereford, Texas. 6'3", 275. The number 15, 35 prospect. Number 123 tackle. Good looking offensive lineman. So we got, we, we replenished that offensive line for sure. Then we got another corner, a Juco Jr. to take the place of Danny Allen, who was a Juco Jr. from two classes ago. This is Kadeem Griffin. Kadeem Griffin from Thermopolis, Wyoming. Another 4-3 guy. Hey, look, look, man. We got speed. We got some serious speed on this team at this point, guys. Yeah, Juco Jr. He coming in super fast next up what a gem this is jakari jackson now i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not 100 percent sure if we're gonna keep him at quarterback but this dude is coming in at plus 18 84 overall quarterback he's given the guy we have on the bench already a run for his money <clears throat> 84 power 78 accuracy we'll see he may end up as a halfback as a running back but we'll see we definitely will see got another quarterback on the list charlie oh hold on hold on real quick <clears throat> want to show his running ability he can break tackles his ball carrying is so 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 i don't know he might end up as a quarterback charlie zellers may or may not make the team another scrambling quarterback from Duncanville, Texas. You can see he's not as fast or as strong as <clears throat> as Jakari Jackson out of Georgia. And that plus 18 is just ridiculous, huh? Then here's a halfback. Now, this guy, I do not, even though he's saying he scouted, I think we scouted him and did not offer him a, a scholarship, but He's number four that ended up on our board. 
Dalen Fox, 6 feet 210 from Red Shoot, Louisiana. We'll see if he gets kept. He got decent speed, but again, he's not one of the guys that we really, really wanted or that we're really crazy about. Uh, ball carrier vision 66. He's, he's decent. We can reassure him if he makes the team and we'll see what happens. If that was number four, I think this is number five. This guy, I don't remember. Yeah, you see, we didn't scout him. So, Josh M. Harris from Pleasanton, Texas. He got decent speed, so we'll see if he makes the team. He's another guy. I think this makes five. There were like six guys that overall that I personally did not bring on but ended up on here. Next up is a Juco sophomore, Miles Frank from Little Rock, Arkansas. 6'8", 306 tackle. Good looking tackle, really strong. We're excited about him. Let me see here. And then, now these last two, I don't know about this. I don't know if this, now this dude, I don't know if these two ended up on the team, but we'll see. Derek Oakman from here for another running back. He just looks like he has this listed, but I don't think he's on the team. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll see. All right, let's check out where we are with the school. So for next year's recruiting, our Coast Prestige is up to A. Championship Contender, we're up to A. Academic Prestige is an A, so we got three A's on the card now. Stadium Atmosphere is up to B. Coach Stability, B minus. Conference Prestige is a C plus. That's us pulling the conference up. Athletic facilities are just a C pro potential, C minus. Campus lifestyle, C minus. Program tradition is a D, and television exposure is a D, so we still have our work cut out for us in terms of being, you know, a top destination for these recruits. Pipeline states going into next year. Texas, of course. Florida, Louisiana, California is going to be up there. California is going to be one of them. So th those are our four pipeline states. And that just so happens to be where all the top recruits come out of. So again, we signed a top 40 class, top 35 class, 35 overall. Last year we had 27, the first year we had 52, so this will go with those. And we will proceed here to position changes. This is where all the magic happens. <clears throat> If I can get away with it, I may try to red shirt Jakari Jackson. So there's Griffin coming back for his senior year. It's a good thing because we would have been in trouble otherwise. Holmes, one of these dudes will make it and one will not. Oh, okay, Derek Oakman from here for Texas. We did, we did sign him. So we'll see if if either one or both make the team. Our two fullbacks coming back, Johnson the third and McLaren. Our wide receivers, one, two, three, four, five. 
Now, hmm. I think these two just are two that ended up. I don't see them. I don't see either one of those guys making the team, to be honest. BJ will make it, but the other ones, no. Our three tackles, nothing to do there. Okay, three offensive tackles. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, okay. Three offensive tackles. We may have some work to do on this line, but let's see. Let's go through it. There's the guard situation, the center situation, the other guards, and the other tackle. Okay. So Nutter will stay as the starting center. We can move Karkowski over to tackle, but I'm thinking we might move him to left tackle because he'll be the top tackle. You see that? Josh Porter may also become a tackle. We can leave him there. Okay, so, okay, wait. And what was Nutter's tackle? Now, I guess it don't matter which. I, Nutter being just an inch taller might make a better tackle. But let's see who's the better pass blocker, and that'll be the guy who I'll move. Ooh, Nutter. Okay. So Brandon Nutter, I'm gonna move him to left tackle and we'll keep Karkowski as our center, our starting center. All right, so Nutter gets moved to left tackle. the strong side the left side I'll move Isaiah Floyd to the left side Bivin can move over to the right side center and we'll most likely redshirt him. Mujahid can stay there.
the leapy has to move to the right side. We'll move McGirt over to the left side so we can reassure him. And he'll be the future left tackle. Might reassure Frank as well. And move Jabari White to guard. Yeah, because we only have two guards right there. We got three guards right there. Hold on. We'll move Jabari White to left guard. Move him to right guard. And that looks like our line, guys. That looks like our line for next year. Felipe should hopefully go, hopefully he can get more than three points and go beyond 76. Okay, yeah, that's it. On the D line. What? I thought he was supposed to be at 80. What happened? guy maybe Lados yep Lados will move to the D line Jeff Johnson back to back to safety, but we don't have enough linebackers to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven DBs, seven corners. Fresh may get moved to line to safety. We'll see. One, two, three. We only have three safeties over here. Isaiah Johnson. Oh, I guess he is fast enough to be a safety. Slade, it says sophomore, but remember, I'm changing that to red shirt freshman. Because he didn't play last year at all. So we're not going to waste this year. And I'm thinking... I kind of want Slade at free safety because of his speed. He's fast enough to be a free safety. And then I'll move this guy to strong safety. Oh, no. No, I won't. I'll keep him there. I have free safety. Bird played free safety, and he was slow. So, I'm going to move. Mm, should I move slide? Hold on. We got two seniors in front of him. But there he'll just have one senior in front of him. Yeah, I'll move Slate to free safety. This player has to make it honestly. Yeah, 
No, actually, it'll make it easier. So, let's see, we got Slade over here. Uh, I'm gonna go back after I look at the athletes. Oh, we only have one athlete. Okay. So that should be easy. We'll put him a half back. So let me come back here. Fresh is the slowest of the cornerbacks. But simultaneously, he's the best tackler of the cornerback. So he's the guy who we can move to safety. Hold on. for his senior season and he's a better free safety than strong so we'll put him at free safety and we'll move Slate back to strong safety those are four free safeties four strong safeties kicker punter we move the athlete to halfback so yeah guys, I think it's gonna be as simple as that. I'm thinking about moving Jak oh no. Damn, I thought Jakari could have been a halfback, but he cannot. He's he's a he's a quarterback through and through. I'll see if we can get away with red shirt and him, but I doubt that. So these two dudes are gonna battle. And Zellers may have just lost his spot. But we'll see. So those are the those are the position change. Wait, hold on. Let me just double check. I have to double, quadruple, triple check. safety spot wait should Slay move the corner then? hold on nope he should not absolutely not alright so that's it that's it for the uh, position changes right here and bring in the tool for the training so one second all right we just brought back in the training results not too happy with it but it is what it is let's take a look real quick at the tool version all right so here's the tool version uh, a lot of green, which is good, but the red, not so much. Lockhart dropped down three points to 77. Uh, Negobu, he was a backup outside linebacker, so for his senior year, he dropped down by three to 72. Alex Biven, the senior offensive guard, he dropped down by one to 72. Middle linebacker, redshirt freshman, Chris Donaldson. So I guess that answers the 
question for a middle linebacker. He dropped down two to 68. And Jamal Dyke, the red shirt freshman corner, he also dropped down. He dropped down four to 63, so he may not even make the team. We'll see. All right, so here's the game version of the results. Let's take a position by position breakdown. I'm gonna try to get away with Redshirt and that quarterback to create separation between him and Rodgers. But there's our quarterback situation. Griffin coming back for his senior year. Holmes, the red shirt junior. Fullbacks. Receivers got better across the board. So that's good. Listing got faster. So we got two super fast receivers. Both are juniors. So they're gonna pair up really well with BJ when he comes back for his rush or freshman year. Our tight ends are gonna be ready for action. They're gonna be an upgrade. They're gonna be much faster than what we're used to. Gill Did Gilliam get taller? I think he was a six, seven freshman, but ooh, I don't know. Nutter got back to where he was on that center side. So we got a, a solid left tackle right there for Braden Nutter. Isaiah Floyd, solid left guard for his senior year. So the left side of the line stays strong. 83 and 84 on the left side of the line. Jabari White goes up two to 70 at his new position. On the center side, Kwiatkowski, almost 90. So their fifth year senior at center. Porter backing him up is up to 75 and Hicks got up to 70. On the right guard side, Pepe got up to 77. Biven went down. We should have registered at Biven, but we weren't able to. Right tackle, Trey Felipe is up to 79. Russell is up to 70. So that's good. That's what, remember I was saying, Trey Felipe was a 73 at the end of his sophomore, redshirt sophomore year. So for his redshirt junior year, he was able to go up by six to 79, which is good. So our offensive line is gonna look really good for next year. It may have gotten better. It may have actually gotten better. And it was already good last year, but it may have gotten better. <clears throat> and hopefully we can keep and redshirt and develop those freshmen we got and, you know, transfer sophomores in there. On the D-line, Percy. So for his fifth year, senior year, he went up five points to 85. That's good because those two freshmen came in to push him, make him get better. On the right side, Henry went up by five so he can compete with the freshman who came in for his sophomore year. Let's see, did he have anything? Oh yeah, he did play last year, so we can't rush him. Huh? Defensive tackles, Caleb James coming in for his senior year, went up one to 83. Jalen Hargrove for his red shirt junior year up three to 78. The freshman Lance Washington is up three to 71. And Lados, the position switch, got him up to 69 for his red shirt junior year. Linebackers, Bickham is up to 83 for his, res for his fifth year senior year. Greg Thomas, did Greg Thomas play? Yeah, no, Greg Thomas, hold on, let me write this. I'm gonna have to take note. So, Greg Thomas, I'm gonna roll his, his eligibility back. He should be a, 
a red shirt sophomore. I'm sorry, a red shirt junior. Cause he didn't play last year. We should have redshirted him, so he's gonna be a redshirt junior. Middle linebackers. Terrence Ellis is up to 78, while Donaldson dropped to 68. It looks like Terrence Ellison will start. Then outside linebacker Ryan Bush is up to 76 for his redshirt sophomore year. Jeff Johnson, the former safety, he's up to 73. And then Chike Anigobu went down by three to 72. So Johnson leapfrogged him. Our cornerbacks, Jimmy Sanders is up to 74. I think Miller had went down last year, so he's back to 68. Same with Simpson, he's at 68. And then Dyke down to 63. So our DBs are not necessarily getting any better, although they are getting faster. We're much faster. Free safety spot, fresh. So that's what happened. Fresh leap for our like Lockhart. So fresh is going to be our starting free safety over the fifth year senior Lockhart. Dexter is up to 71, so he had a good rush art year. On the strong safety side, Slade did not move at all, so he might end up leaving the program. He got two seniors in front of him. I had to promise him the world just to get him to come back. Fells got up to 70 in his red shirt year. Also, okay, Slade. Slade, we're gonna change his eligibility because he also didn't play last year. Cameron Slade should be a red shirt freshman. See, as you can see. Alright, our kicker, his he didn't move, but you know, he didn't really need to. He won the trophy two two years in a row now. Mendez is up to 88 for his senior season. So yeah, that those are the training results. Now it's time to cut players. This is always the hardest part. Okay, we only gotta cut three guys. Zellers may be one of them, but let's go, let's take a look around to see who else could be on the chopping block. Maybe one of these running backs. Oh, I know two of them for sure are going to be these two wide receivers that are under 60. One is a junior. There's no way coming into the program as a junior and your overall is under 60. You're not going to make it behind her. Same with Josh Harris. We didn't, we didn't recruit these guys, so he also isn't going to make it. We're going to try to get away with one, two, three three, four, five receivers because BJ Jones is gonna red shirt next year. So we gotta say goodbye to Josh Harris. All right, so we only gotta really cut one person. Still may end up being Zellers, that quarterback, but we'll see. Or oh, this guy, Mujahid. We didn't really, we didn't really recruit him, so he could be the guy to go, and we might be, get away with keeping Zellers. Lacey could be the guy to go, but we might keep him. He could be the guy to end up going next year.
Dyke, but his speed is going to keep him on the team. Johnson, but he'll redshirt and we'll see how he develops. One second here. Yeah, I think the odd man out is going to be that offensive lineman. I think I'm going to keep the quarterback. I'm going to keep the quarterback on. I'm going to try to redshirt both these freshman quarterbacks. Jackson is a transfer, uh, a risk to transfer, but we're not going to play him over, ooh, even though he's more aware than the redshirt sophomore. Yeah, Rodgers is just a better, uh, the better quarterback for now. But Jakari Jackson is gonna push him, that's for sure. So Zellers, by the hair of his chinny chin chin, is gonna make our squad. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this guy right here. Whitney Mujahid. We never really recruited him, so that'll be the guy. Yeah, and that'll be it. That's our 70. This will be the roster for next year. So, yeah, guys, uh, I think that'll do it for this episode. That'll do it for this season. It was a heck of a good season. Don Newman coming back for his fourth year as a Rice Owl. Who knows? It may be his last. If we have another run like last year, it'll, it'll definitely it'll be harder and harder for Rice to keep him around. But, uh, yeah, man. So, until, until next season... We go, we'll take the rest of this like we did last season and the season before that. We take the rest of this week, this little week off, and have a hiatus. And we'll come back next week with the brand new season, season four. And that's it. What a hell of a season, y'all. What a hell of a season. To the next episode. Peace out.